Okay, welcome back to Math 65. Here we have graphing systems of linear equations. This is our third video for this section. Two friends purchase new cars on the same day. Glenn buys a Nimbus 2000 for $2,200, which depreciates at a rate of 8, 1,800 per year. Bobby purchases a, a Limone for $32,400, it depreciates $3,600 per year. Construct a function to model the value n of x, this is just function notation, of the Nimbus x years after purchase. So you can think about the y-intercept is where we purchased it from, $25,200. It's depreciating, so we're going to take away $1,800 every year. So that's our slope. It's a negative slope. Construct a function to model the Lamone uh, value, the value of Lamone. So that's L of X equals the starting price 32,400 minus uh, 3,600 every year. Graph Graph both functions on the same set of axes, including the scale in your axes. Is the system dependent, consistent, or inconsistent? Use the graph to determine where the two cars will have the same value. Okay, so it's really tricky to graph this on this using this slope, okay? But maybe what we can do is find some critical points. So you, you do have the y-intercept, which I can estimate you know, a little more than 25,000. This one's a little more than 32,000. And to find the y, the x-intercept for each, we could find out when the value of the car is zero. Another thing you could also do is you could use a graphing calculator to graph this. I'm going to be demonstrating how to use the graphing calculator more in class. But for now, how could we figure out when the value of the car is zero? Right, take the total value and we could divide it by the depreciation to figure out in 14 years it will have a value of zero dollars. We're going to do the same thing here, 32,400 divided by the depreciation and we get this one will have in nine years it will have a value of zero so that's one way to you know you can find multiple points here so I'm going to here's nine this is my limone and then 14 I'm going to connect it to the y-intercept my y-intercept might not be exactly, you know, it shouldn't probably be very much higher than the 25,000. That's probably even a little high for maybe 32,400. Okay, and let's see. It looks like they do cross. So, graph the functions. We did that on the same set of axes. Is the system dependent, consistent, or inconsistent? You said consistent because there's one point of of intersection, use the graph to determine when the cars will have the same value. Um, so I'm actually going to do something because I'm not entirely sure how accurate my graph is since I didn't get my y-intercepts um, terribly accurate. So I'm going to show you another way that we're going to learn in the future. But if I set the two values equal to each other, This is actually a substitution method. And I solve this equation for x. I'm going to be able to find out the point of intersection. So subtract this value. So it's basically the essentially the, the difference. And then we're going to add that 3,600x. Finding the difference in the depreciation, the difference in the starting values. So 3,600 minus 1,800 is 1,800x equals 32,400 minus 25,400 gives me 
and then I'm going to divide that by the 1,800 to get x, oops, I must have done something wrong here. Oh yeah. Oh, you see, I put, I made a mistake. It's so hard to use a calculator sometimes. That's 200 and that's 400. So it actually should be 7,200 divided by 1,800, which gives me x equals 4. So it, this was right, the x equals 4 here. x equals 4. And what is the value? So that's the year after four years. And what would the value be? Well, if I plug in x equals 4, I'll get the value. It looks like the value is 20,000, but let's just be sure. So if I take 32,400 and I subtract 1,800, no, sorry, 3,600 times 4, I get, oh, see, I, was, I, I couldn't tell exactly because my point was so big, the, the value is 18,000. Now that should give me the same value on the other equation, so 2,500 or sorry, 25,200 minus 1,800 times 4 gives me the same value, okay? Now it's saying use the model in part A to algebraically determine the Nimbus be worth 0. So that's what I actually did before when I found these x-intercepts. So Essentially what we would do is we'd set the value equal to 0, 2,000, or 20, <laughs> I keep saying it wrong, 25,200 minus 1,800x. Essentially when we solve this for x minus 2,500, no, 25,200 equals negative 1,800x divide by 1,800, negative 1,800, we will get x equals 14. Give the domain and the range of the Nimbus. The domain is 0, 14. Why is that? Because we start out at year 0 and it has no value after 14 years. So this is what we call interval notation. What would the range be? Well, the range is going to be from zero, uh, value of zero. The range is the value. The domain is the years, because the domain is the x values. What's the maximum value of the Nimbus? 25,000, there I said it right, 200. And these numbers are included, which is the reason why we have brackets on them. Okay, for the next, for the limone, we would set it equal to 0, 32,400 minus 3,600x. When you solve for x, you end up getting x equals 9. The domain then would be from 0 years when you bought it to 9. So this is the years. And the range is from $0 to 32,400 dollars. Okay, and we'll stop this one and do the next problem on the next video.